Lesions of the visual pathway can lead to visual disturbances or even visual loss. Let's go over the basics of visual field defects. In the previous video, we went over the basics of the visual pathway. I highly recommend watching that video before watching this video, as it will help you better understand the visual field defects that will be discussed in this video. So this is the diagram of the visual pathway which we discussed in the previous video. We're now going to discuss lesions of this visual pathway and the associated visual field defects. We're going to discuss eight different types of visual field defects. Let's first talk about a lesion at this point, which is labeled A. Lesion A is a lesion of the retina of the right eye. Damage to the retina can lead to what's called a scotoma. A scotoma refers to a noticeable blind spot in the visual field. So if we look at the visual field defects for lesion A, this is what the visual fields could look like with lesion A. This is called a monocular scotoma because there is a scotoma in the right eye. If the lesion is affecting the macula of the retina, then the scotoma can appear much more central. So this is what the visual fields can look like for a patient with a right monocular scotoma. So there is a noticeable blind spot in the patient's right eye. Now let's talk about a lesion at this point labeled B. This is a lesion of the right optic nerve. If the optic nerve is damaged, that means that the fibers coming from the retina can also be damaged. And so no visual signals from the right eye will be able to reach the brain. So in terms of the visual field defect for lesion B, this is what the visual fields can look like. So there is a complete loss of vision in the right eye. And this is known as a right anopia. So if a patient has right anopia, this is what the patient's vision can be. So they have complete loss of vision in the right eye. The next lesion we're going to talk about is this lesion labeled C. This is a lesion at the middle of the optic chiasm. Now if we focus on the visual pathway and particularly focus on which fibers are being damaged, the fibers coming from the nasal hemiretina of both eyes are being damaged. So the fibers that are decussating at the optic chiasm are being damaged. So no visual signals from the nasal hemiretina of both eyes are able to reach the brain. So if we think about the visual field defect for lesion C, this is what the visual fields can look like. So for the left eye, there is a loss of the left visual field because there is no visual signals being carried from the nasal hemiretina. And similarly, in the right eye, there is a loss of the right visual field because there are no visual signals being carried from the nasal hemiretina of the right eye. So for lesion C, there is a loss of the lateral visual fields in both eyes. This is known as a bitemporal hemianopia because the temporal visual fields are being lost. So this is what the vision of a patient with a bitemporal hemianopia can look like. So there is a loss of the lateral visual fields in both eyes. Let's now talk about a lesion at this point, labeled D. This is also a lesion of the optic chiasm, but specifically, this is a lesion affecting the outside portion of the optic chiasm. If we think about the visual pathway and think about which fibers are being damaged, the fibers coming from the temporal hemiretina of the right eye are being damaged. So remember, the fibers coming from the temporal hemiretina stay ipsilateral. So lesion D is affecting these fibers coming from the temporal hemiretina specifically. So if we think about the visual field defect for lesion D, this is what the visual fields can look like. So in the right eye, there is a loss of the left visual field because there are no visual signals being passed from the temporal hemiretina of the right eye. This is known as a right nasal hemianopia. So this is what the vision of a patient with a right nasal hemianopia can look like. So in the right eye, there is a loss of the left visual field. Let's now talk about a lesion at this point labeled E. This is a lesion of the right optic tract. If we think about the visual pathway and think about which fibers are being damaged, we can see that the fibers coming from the nasal hemiretina of the left eye and the fibers coming from the temporal hemiretina of the right eye are being damaged. So no visual signals from the nasal hemiretina of the left eye and no visual signals from the temporal hemiretina of the right eye 
are able to reach the brain. So if we think about the visual field defect for lesion E, this is what the visual fields can look like. So there is a loss of the left visual fields in both eyes because of the lesion. This is known as a left homonymous hemianopia. So this is what the vision of a patient with a left homonymous hemianopia can look like. So there is a loss of the left visual fields in both eyes. We're now going to talk about lesions affecting the optic radiation, which is slightly harder to understand compared to the other types of visual field defects. Let's start off by talking about this lesion labeled F. This is a lesion of the optic radiation, but specifically a lesion affecting the lower bundle of the optic radiation, which remember is traveling through the temporal lobe. If we think about the visual pathway, just like in lesion E, the fibers that are being affected are the fibers coming from the nasal hemiretina of the left eye and the fibers coming from the temporal hemiretina of the right eye. So just like in lesion E, the left visual fields will be affected. However, if you remember from our last video, we discussed how the lower bundle of the optic radiation is specifically involved in carrying visual information from the lower retina and hence is specifically involved in carrying visual information from the upper half of the visual fields. So if we think about the visual field defect for lesion F, this is what the visual fields can look like. So again, the left visual fields will be affected in both eyes because the visual information from the nasal hemiretina of the left eye and the visual information from the temporal hemiretina of the right eye are not able to reach the brain. But specifically, the upper left quadrant of the visual fields will be lost because the lower bundle of the optic radiation will only carry information from the lower retina, so only the upper visual fields will be affected. This type of visual field defect is known as a left homonymous superior quadrantinopia. So this is what the vision can look like for a patient with a left homonymous superior quadrantinopia. There is a deficit in the upper left quadrants in both eyes. Let's now discuss a lesion at this point labeled G. This is again a lesion of the optic radiation, but this lesion is specifically a lesion affecting the upper bundle of the optic radiation. Again, just like in lesion F, this lesion is affecting the fibers coming from the nasal hemiretina of the left eye and the fibers coming from the temporal hemiretina of the right eye. So just like in lesion F, the left visual fields in both eyes will be affected. Remember we discussed in the previous video, the upper bundle of the optic radiation will specifically carry visual information from the upper retina and hence will carry visual information from the lower visual fields. So a lesion affecting the upper bundle of the optic radiation will lead to a deficit in the lower visual fields. So if we think about the visual field defect for lesion G, this is what the visual fields can look like. So just like in lesion F, the left visual fields in both eyes will be affected because the visual information from the nasal hemiretina of the left eye and the visual information from the temporal hemiretina of the right eye are unable to reach the brain. So the left visual fields of both eyes will be affected. But also remember, the upper bundle of the optic radiation will carry information from the lower visual fields. So specifically, there will be a deficit in the lower left quadrants of the visual fields. This type of visual field defect is called a left homonymous inferior quadrantinopia. So again, just to be clear, a superior quadrantinopia will occur when the lower bundle of the optic radiation is affected, whereas an inferior quadrantinopia will occur when there is a lesion of the upper bundle of the optic radiation. So this is what the vision of a patient with a left homonymous inferior quadrantinopia can look like. There is a deficit in the lower left quadrants in both eyes. Let's now talk about the final visual field defect, which is a lesion at this point labeled H. Lesion H is a lesion of the right primary visual cortex. Again, think about the visual pathway. The visual information that reaches the right primary visual cortex is the visual information coming from the nasal hemiretina of the left eye and the visual information coming from the temporal hemiretina of the right eye. So if there is a lesion of the right primary visual cortex, then the left visual fields of both eyes will be affected. So in terms of the visual field defect for lesion H, 
It will be very similar to the visual field defect seen in lesion E, where there was a left homonymous hemianopia. But with lesion H, this is what the visual field defect can look like. So the visual fields look very similar to that which is seen in a left homonymous hemianopia. However, you will notice that there is an area of the visual field which is spared. The center of the visual field is spared. And this is a phenomenon known as macular sparing. This is a very important concept to understand. Lesions of the primary visual cortex most commonly occur due to an infarction of the posterior cerebral artery, also known as the PCA. So a PCA infarction will classically lead to a lesion of the primary visual cortex. However, the macula has dual blood supply. It has overlapping blood supply between the middle cerebral artery and the posterior cerebral artery. So if there is a PCA infarction, the macula will still receive blood from the middle cerebral artery. So there will still be visual information being carried from the macula. So this type of visual field defect is known as a left homonymous hemianopia with macular sparing. So if there is macular sparing, this highly indicates that there is a posterior cerebral artery infarction. So this is what the vision of a patient with a left homonymous hemianopia with macular sparing can look like. So this is a visual field defect that resembles that of a left homonymous hemianopia, but characteristically, the patient will say that the center of their vision is unaffected, and that is due to the phenomenon known as macular sparing. So we've now discussed the key types of visual field defects. Hopefully you now understand how lesions of the visual pathway produce each type of visual field defect. And if you understood that, you will be able to work out how lesions affecting the other side of the visual pathway will produce visual field defects. Let's finish off by talking through some of the key causes of these visual field defects. A monocular scotoma is classically caused by retinal diseases such as retinal detachment. A right anopia is caused by a lesion of the right optic nerve. There are many different causes of a lesion of the optic nerve. For example, conditions that lead to optic nerve damage for example, optic neuritis, which is very common in patients who have multiple sclerosis. Anterior ischemic optic neuropathy refers to conditions that lead to reduced blood supply to the optic nerve. And this commonly occurs as a complication of a condition called giant cell arteritis. And retinal vessel occlusion can also lead to complete loss of vision in an eye. For example, an occlusion of the central retinal artery. A bitemporal hemianopia and a right nasal hemianopia are caused by lesions affecting the optic chiasm. The most important cause of these visual field defects to remember is a pituitary adenoma. The pituitary gland sits very close to the optic chiasm. So with a pituitary adenoma, there is a high risk of the pituitary gland compressing the optic chiasm and leading to these visual field defects. So a pituitary adenoma is a very important cause to remember. Other causes include meningiomas and craniopharyngiomas that can also compress the optic chiasm. A left homonymous hemianopia will typically occur when there is a lesion of the right optic tract. And this classically will occur when there is a right middle cerebral artery infarction. So a key point to remember is that a middle cerebral artery infarction will typically cause a contralateral homonymous hemianopia. That is the classic visual field defect associated with a middle cerebral artery infarction. Now for a left homonymous superior quadrantinopia, this is caused by a lesion affecting the lower bundle of the optic radiation. Remember that the lower bundle of the optic radiation will travel through the temporal lobe. So a left homonymous superior quadrantinopia will typically be caused by a right temporal lobe lesion. So temporal lobe lesions will classically cause a contralateral homonymous superior quadrantinopia. On the other hand, a left homonymous inferior quadrantinopia is classically caused by lesions affecting the upper bundle of the optic radiations. And remember that the upper bundle of the optic radiation travels through the parietal lobe. So a left homonymous inferior quadrantinopia will typically occur when there is a right parietal lobe lesion. So a key point to remember is that a parietal lobe lesion will classically cause a contralateral homonymous inferior quadrantinopia. And finally, as we discussed, a left homonymous hemianopia with macular sparing is classically caused by a right posterior cerebral artery infarction.
So a key point to remember is that a PCA infarction will classically cause a contralateral homonymous hemianopia, but with macular sparing. And the macular sparing is a key difference that is seen in a PCA infarction compared to a MCA infarction. And that is a summary of the visual field defects. Thanks for watching.